no matter how much scouting you do, no matter how many cameras you put out, at the end of the day, when you go out and you sit in a stand, you're just trying to put as many of those pieces together as you possibly can to give yourself just the slightest opportunity to have that animal walk by in range where you can actually shoot it. I heard it. I heard a dink. <laughs> All right, well, it's a little hectic. I only got about two hours of sleep last night. Came down here to Georgia, a place I've never been before. I've always wanted to kill a deer down south. 70 degrees. I feel like I still almost be wearing shorts or something, but we're gonna go try to kill a whitetail. If I were to lease this as a condo back home, it would probably cost like $1,000 a month. Similar to how I grew up deer hunting, I grew up hunting whitetails in tree stands, but this is a little bit more sufficient than a tree stand. I'm hunting out of a redneck blind. But where we're sitting right here is two really, really defined stands of oaks that are dropping acorns like you wouldn't believe. I could hear them dropping on the way in. Uh, they do also use feeders in this part of the country. Very common for deer hunters down south. Not something I grew up doing, but when you hunt a lot of different places, especially for whitetails, because they range across the whole country, you get to experience a lot of different things and a lot of different styles of hunting, and that's part of the fun of it. It's easy to go on a hunt like this and think about, well, that's not how I used to do it, or that's not how I do it back home. But you aren't home, and you're doing something different, and that's the cool part about it. So tonight we're sitting here, hoping some of these deer will filter into these oaks like they have been doing, and if I'm lucky, shoot a buck on the first night, it wouldn't be out of the question. They're in a pretty solid feeding pattern right now, so I only have a few days here to enjoy this experience, and if I can shoot my first Georgia buck on the first evening, I know better than to pass on it. This time of the year, you just gotta put in the time, so. Have an encounter with a deer in here. It's probably gonna be right in our face, so we gotta just be on our A game the whole time. It's not good. It's been raining for about eight hours now. It was downpouring all night. You could hear it just when we were trying to sleep, pounded on the cabin. So we're really hoping some deer show up. We're on a partially harvested cornfield right here. Despite sitting in what we had identified as the most likely places to run into deer, it took a full eight sits before I ever even had a chance of taking a shot. My goal was to time it so that I would be during the chase phase of the rut. So a lot of deer would be on the hoof during daylight hours. And that's exactly what the deer were doing before I arrived and right after I arrived. But while I was here, unfortunately, a hurricane decided to roll in off the coast. It brought in an extreme weather pattern that just changed everything literally overnight. And so my time here was very, very difficult. The deer were not moving very much during the day, and those that were apparently just weren't moving where I decided to sit. Kind of feels like deja vu sitting in this exact spot about three weeks ago, and a lot has changed. Um, it actually feels like deer season now. It's not super hot. It's uh, running about 60 degrees, low in the 30s in the evening. A lot more deer movement during the day. A lot more deer showing up on camera during the day. And this clear cut right here is just a good spot because the deer are running pretty hard right now, trying to look for hot does. So they're cruising and they're chasing. 
and just a great area here to be able to see uh, really a lot of ground and with this rifle I can reach out and touch pretty far so just gonna sit here see if something rolls in this evening we went and looked at a bunch of other spots earlier today that will tap into uh, throughout the week more on hardwood ridges but in the meantime we're just gonna get settled in here for the second leg of this hunt down here in Georgia let's see what happens Whitetail hunting. It is just, it's hard. And you're gonna find that no matter where you hunt these animals. It doesn't matter if you're hunting over food plots in the Midwest or hunting over protein feeders down here in the South, they're still whitetails. And if you think that you're just going to be able to get on them at the drop of a dime, you're sadly mistaken. When these animals really grab hold of you and you become obsessed with everything about them, a big part of that is tied to your preparation as a hunter. The reason you spend so much time thinking about the hunt, preparing for the hunt, making sure all your gear is in line. That's just all part of the, the culture and all part of the passion behind hunting whitetails. So whether it comes to shooting your rifle and becoming proficient with your weapon of choice, or keeping a sharp blade ready for when it's time to make meat after that animal has been killed and you're ready to harvest some food for the table. These are all the things that make whitetail hunting just such an awesome, comprehensive experience. Big Cedar Ranch is home to some 1,500 acres in North Georgia. At its core, it's a bird hunting operation, but the guys who run this place understand comprehensive wildlife management. And so they realized, with the healthy population of whitetails running around, they could do some things to make it a really special place for deer hunting. A place where someone can come to put venison in the freezer, but also have an excellent chance of running into mature bucks. With the nature of what we do with the bird hunting, it allows us to be out in the woods nearly every single day. So we've invested in the cell cameras and it's almost an addiction because every single day you've constantly got all these pics rolling in of different deer, you're naming the deer, you're watching them on a daily basis and it really, it really encourages you to see those deer for what they can be and not necessarily have that initial shock the first time you see that deer when you go in the woods. And I think that's what gets a lot of people is they've never seen a, a deer on their property and it automatically wants them to, makes them want to kill the deer versus, you know, we've, we've seen these deer for three, four years now and it, it gives you a better feeling of of what the deer can be and like it kind of gives you a little more drive to, to see the deer you know, reach its full potential. What I don't think a lot of people realize is that even though 
the white-tailed deer is a species of its own. Scientists and biologists have actually broken down whitetails into subgroups throughout different parts of North America. So there are actually very distinct populations of these deer that have a little bit different characteristics depending on the part of the country they live in. As a lifelong deer hunter, knowing that there is so much diversity with the whitetail throughout North America, it's become a goal of mine to go after deer in different places because not only does it allow me to see different parts of the world, but it really allows me to experience these deer in all the different environments that they live in and learn the white-tailed deer on a level that you can't if you only hunt them in one part of the country.